So if you haven't heard by now, I just released my first ever masterclass on instant photography that I'm calling Master the Art of Instant Photography. It's the first of its kind, by the way. No one else has done this before. <laughs> So with that said, I wanted to give a free lesson for you today. And I wanted to go over something that I get asked all the time about. How are you getting these types of photos from the cameras that you're using? How do you get the blues in the sky? Or my favorite one is Polaroid sucks. You can't get vibrant, saturated images like you can with insects photos. Well, you actually can. And I cover all of this and how you can do it in the class itself. But in this video, I wanted to at least give this for free to you guys here on the YouTube channel. And that is understanding where your light sensor is, how it works, as well as knowing when to use exposure compensation. What it even does, you're gonna find out. So without further ado, let's dive in today's free lesson from Master of the Art, Events of Photography. I'm just another Chris. Pretty much every instant camera on the market right now has uh, exposure compensation. It's very crucial and comes in handy when you're shooting outside because when you're exposing outside, it's not the same as you would be inside. Inside, you don't really have to worry about exposure compensation. Just keep that right in the middle or at zero. Most of these cameras on the market are only going to have two levels of exposure compensation, minus one and plus one. These are stops of light and we don't need to get into that. That's too fancy. Maybe for an advanced course later down the road. But all you really need to know is plus one makes your image a lot more bright. And minus one makes your image a little bit darker. And that helps when you're shooting outside because you are competing against the sun. If you're using right in the middle, it's still probably gonna do a pretty good job, but the sky might be a little bit blown out. So if you do minus one, you get to preserve as much of the highlight as possible and you can still get your subject in clear exposure and have blue in the sky, if the sky is in your frame. There's a lot of experimentation that will go into this. Sometimes you don't need to, sometimes you do, but I'm gonna show you some examples. Now, exposure compensation comes in variety of forms depending on the camera that you are using, but there are some other cameras out there that do it a little bit differently and have a little bit more control over the exposure compensation. But for the sake of this course, I'm gonna use probably what you are gonna be using when you just get started, which are kind of these point and shoot style cameras. How to expose for a bright sunny day. And the first thing is, is make sure the sun is behind the camera. Uh, right now it's, it's lighting me and the camera is facing me, right? It's fairly exposed, right? Hopefully. <laughs> and then you really only have two options for exposing and that is for either the shadows or the highlights. And I typically go for the highlights when I shoot my instant photos because I like to try and get the blue in the skies in my shots, they just look a little bit better. And to do that, I underexpose my shots pretty much every single time I'm outside. So I'm gonna be shooting my project car over here for the exposure. I, like I said, I wanna underexpose this shot. And this has three options for that. It has L, N, and D. And that means lighten, normal, and darken. And I wanna darken the shot. So I'm gonna switch the setting over to D. And then I'm ready to go. I'm gonna shoot my photo. All right, let's do this. These wide cameras, are kind of hard to frame sometimes. It does take a little bit of practice. And I need to back up a little bit, actually. Here we go. In three, two, one. I'm gonna use this forklift as an example, and I'm gonna take two pictures of this. That's because the sun is actually evenly lighting this right now. It's gonna look pretty good. The second shot I'm actually gonna take is from the other point of view, where you don't wanna be, because the sun is directly above us, and I'm gonna be shooting into the sun, which is not ideal, so you don't make that mistake. And again, the reason you don't wanna shoot into the sun is because camera's light sensor is right here, and it's gonna be tricked into thinking that the scene is a lot brighter than it is, when in fact, the back of that forklift is gonna to be really dark. That's because the sun isn't directly hitting it. It's in shadow. And I'm not gonna use any exposure compensation. I'm gonna keep it right dead center. So now the first one's taken, I'm gonna take a shot from the backside. Let's do it. So now I'm behind the forklift and the sun is beating down on me right now. And the light sensor on the camera is, again, thinking that it's a lot brighter than the scene actually is. Now we just gotta wait for these to develop. That's one thing I love about Instax film. It's really fast. <laughs> Polaroid film takes several minutes to develop when this only takes about a minute. Now I'm gonna take the same photo from the front with exposure compensation set to minus one, just to see what difference we can get. 
And when you do use exposure compensation, what that's telling the camera is that you want a little bit darker or a little bit lighter. But what it actually does to the camera is alters the shutter speed slightly to compensate for a little bit darker or a little bit brighter. Oh, and some of the cameras actually use aperture instead of shutter speed. It just depends on the camera you're using. I did a generalization for you there. And here's the actual little bonus tip that I wanna give you today. When I was shooting the forklift from the backside into the sun and the image came out dark, you can actually get the forklift to expose properly because that's when you would use the opposite end of the exposure compensation. You would do plus one or lighten on this particular camera I was using and it would completely blow out the sky. You would get no blues, but you would be able to expose for the forklift. I didn't do that in the course, but I uh, just want to give you that little extra pro tip. If you guys want to get this class, it's available right now. And the reason I want to get this video out today is because there's still time the day of the recording and the day of the upload of this video that is to join the live workshop that comes with the master class it's included <laughs> it's going to be september 8th and there's two time slots for it there's going to be one in the morning 11 a.m pacific standard time if you miss that or not not available don't worry i got you covered there's going to be a second one in the evening 6 p.m pacific standard time and if you don't want to get the class and still want to join the live workshop you still can as a patron member over in the Spitfire Club, you can get in there for free at any level. And in the workshop, we're gonna be going over everything that was taught in the course itself, questions that you have, concerns, things that you're struggling with. This is your opportunity to join in to get those questions answered. And I might be sneaking in a few extra little surprises during the workshop, so you don't wanna miss it. Link is in the description, go sign up for this class. The whole main goal of this course is to help people stop wasting money on Instagram film by taking better photos. I have to talk to and, and, and deal with so many comments on YouTube or people that I talk to either in person or on Instagram, so many people, which is great, don't get me wrong, but a lot of times their minds are so closed off. They say, I've used that camera, it's horrible. I get the worst results from that camera. That one sucks. Polaroid is just terrible. In Instax is just the worst. And they never look within themselves and think maybe, just maybe, it's you. I'm the problem, it's me. I may not be an expert in this field and maybe I need more practice because this isn't digital photography. You can't just point the camera at something. You actually have to use your brain a little bit <laughs> and understanding where light sources are and the temperature outside, things like that. You don't have to really think about that when it comes to digital. So that's where this class, I hope to fill that void because it's missing in our community. There isn't a proper educational source outside of YouTube that isn't condensed into one area. You, we got YouTube and it's all over the place. A lot of tips and tricks and camera reviews, all that good stuff, but you have to hunt for it. There's nothing in one spot so that was my goal you may be asking yourself what qualifies me to even do this class well i've been shooting in photography for the past like three four years or so i mean in fact my first ever video here on this youtube channel was back in 2018 i did an instax mini 9 review <laughs> that was the first real entry into shooting into photography was back then. But I, I would say I've really been gone headstrong, full-time, really dove into the hobby and craft probably in 2020. And plus I released four to eight videos sometimes every single month here on this channel. And I've learned quite a bit of things, things to do, things definitely not to do. And when I was first getting started, I really wanted some type of formal education to help me through this, but there wasn't. So I had to learn it myself. And I think it's now the time to finally get this thing created and help the the community the best I possibly can. That's all I got for you in today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you in the course. Now, get out there, make some art.